Okay. Um, let us start the last presentation of our session. So this paper is titled Quantum Collision Resistance of Non-Uniformly Distributed Functions um, by Targi, Andru, and Tabia, and Esan Ibrahimi Targi will give the presentation. Thank you for introduction. And um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, again, I would tell you about the quantum collision resistance of non-uniformly distributed function. Uh, this is the joint work with my supervisor, Dominic Onru, and uh, with Jello Tabia. And I would like to thank them for letting me to present our work. Just to give you uh, an outline of my talk, first I would, I would define the, what is quantum collision problem. And then um, I will give you some motivation that why this interesting problem. And at the end, uh, I will tell you about uh, our contribution, and I would sketch the proof. So let's start. Quantum collision problem. Uh, suppose that we have function f with uh, domain size n and co-domain co size m, and the quantum adversary that uh, can query function f in superposition of input and gets back the superposition of output uh, and at the end, adversary tries to add for two distinct uh, input that map to the same output. Or adversary tries to add for the collision. Now, uh, the question is how many quantum queries are needed to add for the collision? Or we can ask this question differently, that what is the maximum success probability given the specific number of queries? First one is uh, quantum query complexity point of view, and uh, the second one is uh, quantum qu query solvability. Okay, so far so good. However, I haven't told you about the function f yet, so you may complain that, for example, if f permutation, or if f a constant function, so the problem is easy because uh, in case of permutation. There is no collision to output. And in case of uh, constant function, basically every two pairs is a collision. So it's good to know that the, for which function f, this is a valid and interesting question. And it turns out that for random function, this is a good question to study. And here's why. Collision resistant hash function. Most of you are a cryptographer, so probably you know that collision resistant hash function are central in cryptology. And uh, I would like you, I would like to, to um, remind you two facts about the collision resistant hash function. And first is that in the random oracle model, they model as a random function. To recall, uh, in the random oracle model, uh, Every party, including adversary, has the oracle access to a public function. And in the security proof, uh, basically, we consider that function as a random function. And then uh, security relies on the fact that finding collision for that function is difficult. And uh, second one is, In most cryptographic applications, hash function or compression function. So the domain size is much bigger than the codomain size. So uh, the collision definitely exists. We have to prove that it's hard to output a collision. To recall you, uh, in a classical case, by a birthday attack, the probability of success is roughly half when the uh, number of queries is uh, square root of m, that m was codomain of function. This is a case of classical uh, adversary. And uh, in a quantum case, probably we need more queries. And Zandi, basically, Zandi uh, has a theorem for a random function. And he proves that uh, when f is a random function, then any quantum adversary making true number of queries will output a collision with probability uh, O of Q3 over M. 
So uh, this means that uh, omega tube root of m is a lower bound for number of queries to output a collision. The story has not ended yet. So the question is, what if f is not a random function? What if f, if, uh, f is a non-uniform function? So uh, this is a valid question. And uh, basically, the output of f are chosen according to non-uniform distribution. But is this uh, an uh, interesting question? I will give you at least one motivation to study this problem. And uh, here is the motivation. In some cryptographic construction, the combination of true random function and encryption function, or a function that is not, an, is not uniform, has to be collision resistant. So it's not just a, it's not just a random function. As an example, uh, Fujisaki Okamoto transform. Uh, this is the case for Fujisaki Okamoto transform. And uh, their construction basically, they combine two weakly secure encryption scheme to using two uh, random oracle H and G to construct a CCA encryption scheme in the random oracle model. And security relies on the fact that out, out to output a collision for encryption OH or com composition of encryption and H has to be difficult. So, um, of course, this encryption is not a uniform function. So, the combination is not uniform. So, we cannot apply the Zandri result here. So, we have studied uh, this problem and uh, here is uh, our result. So let f is a function that uh, its output are chosen according to distribution with mean entropy k. Here I recall the mean entropy. And uh, any quantum adversary a uh, making q queries to f will return a collision with probability at most o of q to the power 9 over 5 over 2 power q over 5. And uh, you can see that when, when k is big, this is a negligible probability. And this means that omega to the power uh, 2 to the power k over 9 is a lower bound for outputting collision in the non-uniform case. OK. I would like to, I would like, uh, to give you a proof of our result, just a sketch. But I need some uh, preliminaries and some basic definition and uh, lemmas that we have used. So here is the first one, universal hash function. A family of uh, functions set is called to be universal family if uh, two things for uh, two distinct x and y, when we, choose, when we choose h randomly, then the probability that they are quite is very small or one over to the power m. And the uh, next one is left over hash lemma that says uh, when x is a, a random, vari random variable with mean entropy k, so it's not a, not, it's not a uniform, uh, uh, and uh, by, by applying uh, a random u universal hash function, we will get uh, approximately q uniform bits. So we can extract from uh, non-uniform uh, source a uniform bits. So we need also this uh, left over hash number for our proof. And uh, here is a sketch of proof. Um, the, pro the first probability is probability of output in collision for function f. And uh, a sub q to the power f means that as the say a makes q queries to the function f. And uh, when f is a function that its output are chosen according to distribution of d. Let's suppose that distribution of d has minus ruby k. 
So there's a step that we apply a left uh, a universal hash function here. We apply a universal hash function H to F. And uh, the first inequality is, is clear because uh, a collision for F is a collision for H or F as well. So finding collision here is easier to find a collision for the next one. Sorry, uh, I'm going to say finding collision here is easier. So um, the, the next step, the second uh, equality, we basically, uh, we have a lemma that proves that uh, when we have a quantum adversary A that makes Q queries to the function F, then we can construct a quantum adversary B that make quant Q number of queries to H O F and output the, output the collision with same probability. So here, we, uh, adversary B has to simulate A. So B runs A and answer to its query by looking at the preimage of F. So B simulates A. And uh, this approximation is because of that uh, two fact. First is uh, two lemma. First is uh, left or hash lemma. And uh, second is uh, oracle indistinguishability. Oracle indistinguishability says that uh, when two distribution are uh, indistinguishable, then the, the oracle the oracle also is indistinguishable. And here, after applying H, we get a random function here because of the left over hash lemma. And we can uh, use uh, Zandri's result here because Zandri proved that for random function, this is a hard problem. And we will get that, uh, yes, output the collision for a non-uniform function is also hard. And this is uh, our bound. So we, we, we prove that output the collision for F is less than O of Q to the power 9 over 5 over 2 uh, power K over 5. And um, there is some parameter here involved. Uh, that's why we got this, uh, this uh, bound. And uh, because of the left over the hash lemma and Zandri's result. And yeah, I uh, finished my talk here. And we have uh, plenty of time for question of five <laughs> minutes for question and plenty of time for break. Thank you very much. Any questions? No, it's not. It is the lower bound. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, we expect uh, intu intuitively, we expect that it should be two to the power q over three. But uh, it's kind of work in progress. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, if the function h the next right, the next next yes. If H is uh, if if uh, H is unit random, random function and uh, uh, F is a special function such as with mean entropy k, etc. Then what result will be occurred? I'm afraid I I didn't get your question. Uh, yeah. uh, 
This means the F is uniform, uh, F is random function. Yes. So which is which so, uh, step? And a second, first, three. Uh, uh, in your paper, the C on uh, corollary one. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, in the corollary one, the function F is with mean entropy K and O is function O is uniform, a uh, random function. Then if f is random function and o is a special function such as being entropy k. Okay, uh, I got the, what you mean. In a quality, uh, actually we, we have a, a public function and we have a random function. Then uh, when we, we apply random function, sorry, a, a function to the random function, it's equivalent to get a, a function that its output are chosen according to non-uniform distribution. So based, that's why we, we can uh, use the, the theorem. If you're not convinced, we can talk in the break. More questions? Okay, let's thank all the speakers of this session.